Chapter 5 Continuity and Differentiability This chapter is a continuation of Chapter 13 Limits and Derivatives that you have studied in Class 11. You have learned how to differentiate a special functions like polynomial and trigonometric functions. So in this chapter we will discuss the important concepts of continuity, differentiability and relation between them. Also we will learn how to differentiate an inverse trigonometric functions and will introduce new techniques to differentiate a function easily. In today's lecture, we will discuss about continuity. That is, the concept of continuity, how a function become continuous at a point, discontinuous functions, its graphical peculiarities, and we will do some examples. Continuity. In a simple way, we can define a function is continuous when its graph is a single unbroken curve. That is, we can draw a graph without lifting the pen from the paper. Now look at these two graphs. I can draw this graph without lifting my pen from the paper. So this is a continuous function. But here I have to lift my pen to draw the second curve. So these type of functions are called discontinuous function. This is not a proper definition of continuity. But it's a simple way to help you to understand how a function is said to be continuous. In mathematics, a function is said to be continuous at a point x equal to a if it is satisfied the following three conditions. The first condition is f of a must exist. That is, there should be a finite value for f of a. Second one is limit x tends to a of the function must exist. You have already studied in previous year that there are two ways that x could approach a number, either from left or from right. So this naturally leads to two limits, the left hand limit and right hand limit, denoted by limit x tends to a plus f of x which is the right hand limit and limit x tends to a minus f of x which is the left hand limit. If the right hand limit and left hand limit coincide. We call that common value as the limit of f of x at x equal to a. And it is denoted by limit x tends to a f of x. So our second condition is if the limit exists as x is approaching a value. Now if we get these two things then make sure that limit x tends to a f of x is equal to f of a. This is our third condition. That is, as x get closer and closer to a, then f of x get closer and closer to f of a. So these are the three conditions that should be satisfied for a function to be continuous at a point. If any of these conditions is not exist, then a function is not continuous. It is said to be a discontinuous function. We will discuss discontinuous function in detail later. So, a function is said to be continuous if it is continuous at every point on its domain. A domain means it is all the values that go into a function. So, in this graph, this is the domain. So, within this domain, when the function is continuous, then it is said to be a continuous function. So, this is a continuous function because within this domain, this function satisfies all the three conditions. So, this is a graph of a continuous function with no broken region but this one is not continuous it is a discontinuous function here if we put x is equal to 0 then the function goes to infinity which is an undefined value our first condition says that f of a must be a finite value but here it is an infinite value so we can say that the function is discontinuous at x is equal to 0 but if we change the domain to x is greater than 0, it does not include the value 0. It includes the value which is greater than 0. That is, if x is equal to 1, y is equal to 1 by 1, this is equal to 1. x equal to 2, y is equal to 0.5 and x is equal to 3, y is equal to 0.33 and so on. So, if we plot a graph, it looks like this. Hence, the function f of x is equal to 1 by x 
is continuous for all values of x except at x is equal to 0. Now we can do some examples. Question number 1. Check the continuity of the function f given by f of x is equal to 2x plus 3 at x is equal to 1. Given f of x is equal to 2x plus 3. Now we have to check the continuity of this function at a given point. We know that for a function to be continuous, these three conditions must be satisfied. So let's check it. Our first condition is f of a must exist and it should be a finite value. Therefore, f of 1 is equal to 2 into 1 plus 3. This is equal to 5. This is our first condition. Second condition is limit f of x must exist. So, limit x tends to 1 f of x. This is equal to limit x tends to 1. What is f of x? This is 2x plus 3. This is equal to 2 into 1 plus 3 equal to 5. This is our second condition. See, 1 and 2 are equal. Therefore, we can write limit x tends to 1 f of x is equal to f of 1. This is our third condition. Thus, the given function satisfies all the three conditions. Hence, it is a continuous function. Question number 2. Discuss the continuity of the function f given by f of x is equal to modulus x at x is equal to 0. Here, the function is a modulus. So, it can be rewrite as f of x is equal to minus x if x is less than 0 and f of x is x if x is greater than or equal to 0. Here, the function is said to be continuous if limit x tends to a plus f of x, which is the right hand limit. This is equal to limit x tends to a minus f of x, which is the left hand limit. This must be equal to the value of the function f of a. Here, the function is defined at x is equal to 0. Therefore, f of 0 is equal to 0. This is our first condition. Now, the left hand limit of f at 0 is limit x tends to 0 minus f of x. This is equal to the given point is x is equal to 0. So, the left hand side of 0 is x less than 0 and the function there is minus x. So, this is equal to limit x tends to 0 minus what is f of x here? This is minus x. This is equal to 0. Similarly, the right hand limit of f at 0 is limit x tends to 0 plus f of x. This is equal to limit x tends to 0 plus. This is the right hand side that is x is greater than 0 and the function here is x. So, this is limit x tends to 0 plus of x. This is equal to 0. So, this is our second condition. 1 and 2 are equal. Therefore, limit x tends to 0 plus f of x is equal to limit x tends to 0 minus f of x. This is equal to f of 0. Therefore, the right hand limit, the left hand limit and the value of the function are equal. Hence, f is a continuous function at x is equal to 0. Question number 3. Show that the function f is given by f of x is equal to x cube plus 3 if x is not equal to 0 and f of x is equal to 1 if x is equal to 0 is not continuous at x is equal to 0. Here, the function is defined at x is equal to 0 and its value is 1. Therefore, f of 0 is equal to 1. 
when x is not equal to 0, f of x is equal to x cube plus 3. This is a polynomial function. So limit x tends to 0, f of x is equal to limit x tends to 0. What is f of x here? This is x cube plus 3. This is equal to 0 plus 3 which is 3. This is our second condition. So look at 1 and 2. These two are not equal to each other. Therefore, limit x tends to 0 f of x is not equal to the value of the function f of 0. Hence, the function is not continuous at x is equal to 0. These are some standard continuous functions, constant functions, modulus functions, exponential functions, logarithmic functions, polynomial functions, trigonometric and inverse trigonometric functions. All are continuous functions. We will do all the examples of each standard functions in exercise problems. Discontinuous function. As we have discussed in earlier section that a function is said to be continuous if it is satisfy all the three condition. If any failures in this condition, then we can say that the function is not continuous. It is a discontinuous function. On the basis of the failures, there are different types of discontinuity. First one is jump discontinuity. Here, the limit of the function exists, but they are not equal to each other. So you can see a big gap or a big jump in the graph. So this type of discontinuity is called jump discontinuity. The second one is infinite discontinuity. In this type of discontinuity, the function goes to infinity at x equal to a. The third one is point or removable discontinuity. Here, the function does not exist at a point. Hence, the limit of the function is not equal to the value of the function. So there is a gap or a hole in the graph at that point. So this is called point discontinuity. Now we can do some examples of this types of discontinuities. Question number 1. Discuss the continuity of the function f defined by f of x is equal to x plus 2 if x is less than or equal to 1 and x minus 2 if x is greater than 1. Which means the function f of x is x plus 2 for all values of x which is less than or equal to 1 and f of x is x minus 2 for all values of x which is greater than 1. So here the function is defined at all the real numbers. Case 1. If x is less than 1, f of x is x plus 2. Then f of a is equal to a can be any real number which is less than 1. So f of a is equal to a plus 2. This is our first condition. Now the second condition is limit x tends to a f of x. This is equal to limit x tends to a. What is f of x? This is f of x plus 2. This is equal to a plus 2. This is our second condition. See, 1 and 2 are equal. Hence, we can write limit x tends to a f of x, this is equal to f of a. This is our third condition. So, the function satisfies all the three conditions. Therefore, we can say f is a continuous for all the real numbers which is less than 1. Therefore, the function f of x is continuous at all real number which is less than 1. Now, case 2. If x is greater than 1, what is f of x here? We know f of x is x minus 2. Then, f of a is equal to a minus 2. Limit x tends to a. f of x is equal to limit x tends to a f of x minus 2. This is equal to a minus 2. 
This is our second condition. See, 1 and 2 are equal. So, we can write limit x tends to a f of x is equal to f of a. This is our third condition. Since the function satisfies all the three conditions, hence the function is continuous at all points of x greater than 1. Case 3. If x is equal to 1, then the limit of f of x as x approaches 1 from left hand side is limit x tends to 1 minus f of x. This is equal to limit x tends to 1 minus. Now what is f of x here? This is x plus 2. This is equal to 1 plus 2 equal to 3. Similarly, the right hand limit of f at x equal to 1 is limit x tends to 1 plus f of x. This is equal to limit x tends to 1 plus. Now what is f of x here? If x is greater than 1, then f of x is x minus 2. So this is equal to 1 minus 2 equal to minus 1. So here the left hand limit and right hand limit both are not equal to each other. Both are not equal to each other. Therefore, the function is not continuous at x is equal to 1. Therefore, the function is not continuous at x is equal to 1. Or we can say that x equal to 1 is the only point of discontinuity of the function f. Now we can draw the graph. So put the values of x which is greater than or equal to 1 here. So here the function is f of x equal to x minus 2. When x equal to 1, y is equal to minus 1. x is equal to 2, y is equal to 0. x is equal to 3, y is equal to 1 and so on. Similarly, put the values of x which is less than or equal to 1 here. The function here is f of x equal to x plus 2. At x equal to 1, y is equal to 3. x equal to 0, y is equal to 2. x equal to minus 1, y is equal to 1 and so on. So, look at this graph. The function is approaching different values depending on the direction of x. If x is greater than 1, the function is like this. And if x is less than 1, the function is approaching like this. And at x equal to 1, there is a big break in the graph. When this happens, we say the function has a jump discontinuity at x equal to a. Infinite discontinuity. Example 1. Discuss the continuity of the function f defined by f of x is equal to 1 by x minus 1. Given f of x is equal to 1 by x minus 1. At x is equal to 1, f of 1 is equal to 1 by 1 minus 1. This is 1 by 0, which is an undefined value. According to our first condition, f of a must be a finite value. But here, it is an infinite value. So, there is a discontinuity at x is equal to 1. Now, what about the limit of the function as x is approaching 1? That is, limit x tends to 1 plus, which is the right hand limit this is equal to 1 by limit x tends to 1 plus 1 by x minus 1 this is equal to plus infinity if x is greater than 1 similarly the left hand limit of the function that is limit x tends to 1 minus f of x this is equal to limit x tends to 1 minus 1 by x minus 1 which is equal to minus infinity for x is less than 1. As you can see as x is approaching 1 from left or from right the value of y is getting larger and larger. So if we plot the graph it looks like this. Here x equal to 1 is what we call vertical asymptote that is the value of x that makes the 
denominator of the function equal to 0. We already said f of 1 is undefined at x is equal to 1. As x is approaching from left, the y shoots up to minus infinity. And x approaching from right, the y shoots up to plus infinity. We wish to emphasize that infinity is not a real number. Hence, the limit is not exist at x is equal to 1. So, this is infinite discontinuity at a given point. Third discontinuity is point or removable discontinuity. Example 1. Discuss the continuity of the function defined by f of x is equal to x square minus 1 divided by x minus 1. Given f of x is equal to x square minus 1 by x minus 1. If x is equal to 1, f of 1 is equal to 0 by 0, which is an indeterminate form. So we can see there is a discontinuity at x is equal to 1. So we need another way to answer this. So instead of trying to working it out at x is equal to 1, let's try approaching it closer and closer. Now we can see that x get close to 1, then x square minus 1 by x minus 1 gets close to 2. But at x equal to 1, we don't know the answer, it is indeterminate. So these are the situations that we can use limits. So here, limit x tends to 1, x square minus 1 by x minus 1, this is equal to 2. But at f of 1, this is equal to 0 by 0. So if we plot the graph using this data, the graph looks like this. Now look at this graph. We cannot say what the value of x equal to 1 is. But we can say that as we approach 1, the limit is 2. So the function is discontinuous at x is equal to 1. This type of discontinuity is what we call point discontinuity. Here, limit x tends to a f of x is not equal to f of 1. That is, But the interesting thing is, this type of discontinuity can be removed by redefining the function so that the limit of the function will be equal to the value of the function. Therefore, point discontinuity is also known as removable discontinuity. Now, let's see how we can remove this discontinuity. Our function is f of x is equal to x square minus 1 by x minus 1. Now, by factorizing, by factorizing, the function we get f of x is equal to x plus 1 into x minus 1 divided by x minus 1. This is equal to x plus 1. Now, our function become f of x is equal to x plus 1. Now put x is equal to 1 here. So we get f of 1 is equal to 2. So we can rewrite the function as f of x is equal to x square minus 1 by x minus 1 when x is not equal to 1 and f of x is equal to 2 when x is equal to 1. So, what we have done is, we redefine the function to make it a continuous function by filling the hole. We have a problem only at x is equal to 1, and there is no problem for any other values. So, at x is not equal to 1, the function is f of x is equal to x square minus 1 by x minus 1. But, when x is equal to 1, we redefine the function and it is equal to 2 instead of its original function. At x equal to 1, we had a point discontinuity or removable discontinuity. And we filled up the hole by saying that when x is equal to 1, the function is 2. So in that way, we can redefine the function to remove the 
discontinuity and make the function continuous at that point. So this is an example of removable discontinuity. In the next lecture, we will discuss about the algebra of continuous functions, theorems, its proof and relating examples.